leveraging talent. We had a very successful job fair on Saturday. Uh, we had, how many staff members did we have there? Dr. Parker, do you know off the top of your head? Fair, um, yeah. we, in, we interviewed um, about 70 to 80 candidates, and then we had extras walking in for SEXO, transportation, instructional systems, and substitutes. Right, and we probably had 50 staff members that volunteered their time to come to the job fair and represent each of the school. and. So it was a very successful job fair. Uh, we offered one early contract, and we have uh, several other good candidates that um, that we interviewed and that will be there for openings that we may have. So um, just another example of, of the work that we do in terms of making sure we have the best talent in the building. Goal three is invest in community. Uh, the things that we have done this year, uh, probably um, top among that is expanding the Equity and Diversity Committee. Dr. Prince has done a really nice job leading that committee. Um, they have several new initiatives that have come forth as a result of that. Uh, we also had several of us who were able to attend the Martin Luther King, um, I guess it wasn't a breakfast, um, community event um, on Sunday, uh, which was a wonderful event that we hosted at Powhatan High School uh, that was rescheduled because of um, inclement weather and that went very well, which is again another example of us, I think, reaching out and inviting our community into our buildings and, um, and honoring our community um, and the partnerships that we have. And then finally, um, goal four is about culture and well-being. Um, I think the one that I'm most excited about is the partnership that we have with the Powhatan Free Clinic, uh, where we have counselors that are working at Powhatan High School, uh, providing services to students, uh, counseling services to students through a referral process, either through a parent, a counselor, a teacher, um, so that we're actually bringing the services that will encourage wellness into the school where it's more readily accessible to our students. So, Again, that can also go in uh, the last one about investing in community because it's been a great partnership with the Powhatan Free Clinic and um, Connie Moslow um, attacked, approached us about this partnership and Katie Wojcicki did a real nice job of um, fleshing it out and coming to fruition and it's already started and we're seeing a lot of services providing to our students. Excuse me, Ms. or Dr. Jones. Yes. Can I, so, so the counselors are and we're actually having professionals from the free clinic, doctors and psychologists that are coming to the high school and have basically office hours um, in the afternoon and evening. And students are referred to them um, to provide um, counseling services to them. Thank you. Uh, the next slide has our average class size uh, that we do every year to monitor this. Again, we are in very good shape when it comes to class size. There are fluctuations from year to year, be it grade level or content area based on enrollment, but uh, overall we're maintaining our class sizes where they are, um, and that is mainly because we're maintaining our enrollment where it is um, and just making adjustments within the staff that we currently have. Next slide is the enrollment. You can see that we're projected to have 4298, a slight decrease uh, from this year. And, uh, but that number could fluctuate based on actual, that's a projection. This line um, graph is one that we see every year, which talks about comparison of pupil costs um, from the state average. We're at our widest gap from the state average that we've been in the last um, six years, or, or we're in 2017. We'll get the 2018 numbers in April. Mr. John, so we'll update this chart and make sure we share it with you to, to see where, where we stand as opposed to the state average and per pupil expenditures. Do we ever look at that number in comparison to our peers? You know, we sort of look at the salary and compensation in terms of our comparators. Yeah. We do the same thing. We do the same thing and we're very competitive with our peers, our neighbors uh, when it comes to that. We're um, not the lowest, but uh, rank among the lowest in um, our neighbors, and we can get that information to you. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yep, happy John, to do that. Do you want to add something? Well, uh, I have some notes at the bottom of this chart that show you where we uh, rank uh, within the state, and so, um, but I can, I do, it, we do have the data available for all of our surrounding counties, so we can do a comparison of those. Yes, sir. I, mean, I was just thinking in terms, we, we rely on them so much in terms of compensation levels mm -hmm. for our employees. It would be nice to see the per pupil costs have been a similar kind of comparison. Yes, sir. We can do that very easily. Right. So, no, 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 that's fine. Yeah, good question. Uh, we'll be happy to get you that information. Um, the next chart um, is this pie graph or a pie chart of comparison of fixed and variable costs. Uh, this, um, 
at least one board member asked for some historical data on payroll and benefits, so we'll um, show you that in a minute when we finish this um, presentation. It is attached to the agenda item in board docs. I'll let Mr. Johns go over that uh, as he prepared it. Um, but again, um, important number here is 4.43%, which is what we have available to us as variable costs. Um, what I like to say are things outside of our control that we don't have to do. Um, and you can see that number went down almost a full percentage point from the 17-18 budget when it was over 5%. So um, I, again, I think we're being very efficient with the funds that we have um, and making sure that we're compensating our employees and that uh, remains a top priority. Jones, does that factor in also uh, fully closing out the old middle school? Is that responsible for some of those savings? Um, that could be some of it, that um, money that we returned, that last installment that we returned to the county could be some of that funding as well. Um, I think that was like 170000 so that was probably part of it. The next slide is revenue and expenditures um, summary. Um, and again, uh, we're presenting a balanced budget with the information that we currently have based on the governor's budget. Um, the, as you all know, the General Assembly has um, come to an agreement on the budget. We've re received some preliminary numbers, but we have not received official numbers from the DOE, what we, um, uh, funding sheets that we get from the DOE that give us a breakdown. Uh, but we know that um, based on our preliminary analysis and some information that we've gotten from some of our professional organizations, it looks like we're going to be about a little over 100,000 short of um, being balanced based on the agreement that the Senate and the House of Delegates have come up with. So uh, right now we're balanced as a budget, but we know um, and we're hoping to have that as numbers by the end of this week. And then um, we will bring back a new balanced budget to you on March 12th for your consideration with any uh, deficit that we have based on the agreement between the um, House and the Senate. The big change was is that um, money was moved from lottery funds to the at-risk add-on. That benefits divisions that have a higher um, at-risk population, more poverty, more urban districts. So they got um, a little more money with the compromise that came out between the House and the Senate. It resulted in us and some of our neighbors getting um, less funding than what was in the original governor's budget. So again, it's a, a little over 100,000. We, we anticipate about 111,000 uh, is the number that we have right now, but until we see the final numbers, uh, we didn't want to put that in there uh, because it's not official at this point. So we were able to balance the budget um, in this go-round by doing a couple different things. Uh, we eliminated the replacement of two SPED vans out of transportation. Those were things that we wanted to have purchased, but we can uh, certainly, we're in good shape for the next year. It's just a delay of a year on the replacement cycle. Um, and then we also have some line items on contracted repairs, um, things such as roofing, um, other things that we have available within our operations budget. And we feel comfortable reducing that line item um, some to allow us to balance our budget, especially since a lot of that work is being done as part of our project with TRAIN, uh, the energy performance contracting. So those were the two big reductions that we were able to make uh, to cut the deficit that we had when we last presented the budget to you. Any questions on that? So if we, just we, don't, if we lose another hundred and ten or eleven thousand dollars and we won't really get enough from the state to even cover that three percent salary. Because it's nine hundred ninety-three thousand dollars that's required for a three percent salary increase. If we leave another hundred ten thousand, we only get nine hundred seven thousand dollars. Nine hundred seven hundred thousand dollars from the state. So Correct. I mean, the state will say they're funding their portion of the three percent raise, but certainly it's not nearly enough. That um, especially when there are other funds that we have to spend or other. Um, categories that we have to spend that are designated in that increase as well. So again, it's about six, a little less than 60% of that raise that we're getting from the state. So um, yeah, we'll, we, um, the division leadership team has begun looking at a different couple line items and um, identifying what we can do, um, but uh, we're still working on that and until we get the final numbers, um, we will certainly um, share that with the board when we come forward with a recommendation 
um, for how to balance the budget with the new um, budget that's been passed. Yep, our budget priorities remain the same. Um, at this point, we um, uh, first priority that the board has established back in the fall was salary increase for employees. We do have the state share of funding for the 3% salary increase, so that remains our top priority. Um, we are um, still, uh, all of these are unchanged. Um, and certainly some of these, even though they're priorities, may have to be reduced or modified um, in order to balance the budget. Um, and if we have to do that, then we have to do that, but we'll look at other um, savings and efficiencies that we can um, get from other departments as well. And there may be a combination of those that get us to a place where we um, are balanced with the new numbers from the state. The second item, Dr. Jones, yep. it's my recollection you said that sure of none was expected to see additional funding as well that was budgeted through the state. Did, was that included in the conference committee? I do not know for sure, but um, what uh, what I have heard um, from the county, not officially, is that I don't the, he had put in his budget for an increase in an uh, SRO deputy. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's going to come forward in the county administrator's proposed um, budget. Um, I've gotten word secondhand that it may not, but I haven't heard officially yet. Um, which would be disappointing, but certainly, you know, they have to make decisions as well. Process. Right, they go through their own process. But I will check on that to see exactly where we are and if there was any funding specifically for SROs as a result of the budget. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on these? On, Mr. Kirk, I'm sorry. Uh, on page nine, on your comparison of per pupil cost. Yep. We have what the state gives us per pupil each year. Do we have that figure, Mr. Jones? Uh, we do. I don't uh, remember it off the top of Right, but I, we do have that number. So I'm just wondering whether that would be another line to put on your graph. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's, you know, you, if you put on there, no, it, well, it's, it's uh, less than half of that $1,400. Right, right. It's like, I, I think that would be good information to share with their state senator and Mr. Ware. Okay. Uh, you know, because it, we all know that the state percentage what our budget, or of our total budget, what the state has given us has gone down right. consistently yep. from, over the last eight to ten years. And, and I don't think anybody has any idea how much more, you know, what that looks like you know, in a graphic form like this. So if that, that might be something you could play with and look at and see what it looks like. If it looks like it, it helps capture some of that, that's fine. I, I just think that's you know, year in year out the state does a good job publicizing what they do but they don't do a good job of publicizing what they don't do uh, which I wouldn't either but I think it's important to right. point that out okay and, and I, I can do that very easily and uh, I'm, I didn't mean to say less than half of 14 if you look at the power town expense of say 10,699 we're getting somewhere around 5,000 of that or less from the state or the Localities come up to the difference. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair. Mr. Congress. I, I am in support of having that data provided, but if you have to change the scale of this to accommodate that, it is going to make the Powhatan average and the state average much closer because these scales going to have to expand. And I think that the, the state the state line is going to run in the opposite direction from what we what we guess. So it might need its own slide. Just to, uh, uh, and I can do that because in all fairness, I would also want to put the federal uh, cost per people yeah. on there. And I do have all those numbers. In fact, used to do those other right. charts, just didn't present them. So, right. That you, uh, you chart you sent us might be a place to put it. You know, like in a similar chart like that where you've got all three of those things lined up year by year. But okay. Anywhere we get it, I think, is it just, you know, I think it's data that, that I would say would be good for people to see. Yes, yeah, speaking only for myself, I value the information, and the more that you can provide to me, the more I would certainly appreciate it. Mr. Chairman? Mrs. Eden. Um, so, uh, goal three on, um, let's see, budget priorities, what slide is it? Um, uh, second to the last. Okay, 12. 12. Why is it not coming? Yes, 12. Um, goal three there. So, 
along with what Mr. Cole said, um, could we let our um, uh, Senator Sturdivant and, and our Delegate Ware know that that's what we have to add somebody because of the state and uh, federal requirements? Yes, we certainly do add, that. I think we could add that. And then whatever happened with the um, guidance counselors and social workers and that, do we know that yet? Would any, any, any of those? There was no funding. Mr. Oh, Johnson, do you want to? Um, I won't really know for sure on that until I get the calculation sheets this Friday. But on the ones that came out from the uh, governor, House and Senate, um, it uh, did not look like they were really giving us any additional money uh, because on guidance it was less than a one additional FTE. So uh, until I you know get those calculation sheets, it's hard to say. My, yeah, my understanding is, is there may be some additional money for that, but there's not the requirement to add those positions because it's not enough to add um, the amount of positions that originally they wanted to get it down to a ratio of 1 to 250 students and they were going to stagger that in. And I think they ended up just kicking the can down the road and spreading that, okay. that um, phase in even more. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the update. Mm -hmm. All right, Dr. Okay. Um, if we want to take a look at the revenue expenditure summary sheet analysis now. Again, this just provides kind of a summary sheet that we do each year to show how we balance. Um, you can see our um, comments. You have the local county transfer of what's it, uh, included in the county administrator's recommended budget. Um, other revenues, um, what we um, originally were going to get from the state, um, additional revenue, and then federal, and then payroll and benefits. We've updated this to include the 1.8% health insurance rate. That is um, important to know that's 1.8% overall. So we're looking now, and I know Mr. John's had a meeting with um, Local Choice today um, to look at how that 1.8% breaks out over the three different plans that we have. Do you have any information you want to share on that, Mr. Johnson? Uh, well, I will uh, have the rate sheets uh, for the board meeting on March 12th. They'll be presented as information uh, purposes, and then coming back on the March 26th meeting, and ask it, which is also the meeting where the board adopts the budget, and ask for approval of the rate sheets, you know, while you adopt the budget. But the initial look at those plans, right now we have three plans. We have Key Advantage uh, 250, uh, Key Advantage 500, and the high deductible. The um, Key Advantage 500, uh, those monthly premiums are going up uh, $1, uh, for um, employee only, uh, $2 a month for employee plus one, and $3 a month for um, the uh, family. The uh, KA250 is going up a little bit more than that, uh, like uh, anywhere from uh, $20, or I don't know if I brought that sheet with me, but uh, I've already started working up the rate sheets and everything, and um, <coughs> The, um, the Key Advantage uh, 250 is going up, the uh, monthly variance on that is uh, between $22 and $59 for a family. The high deductible is between 20 and, and 54 So I'll have those splits worked up for the board to look at the rate sheet to see what the impact is going to be to the employees and um, bring that to you for uh, March meeting. But this money that we have uh, projected here, the seventy-one thousand dollars, I've already worked up the draft of the, work, the uh, rate sheets, and that is sufficient for us to uh, keep the impact of the employees uh, as well as we can. We've got the extra uh, positions in there, and then of course the salary increase, which is, uh, as you can see, a large bulk of um, the increased revenue that we have. Big change in this revenue and summary uh, expenditure summary from the last meeting is the other line items that's been reduced um, dramatically because we took out the two sped vans as well as the adjustment within the um, operations uh, budget. Uh, but at this point, we are um, balanced with what we know, but we know we're going to have to do some more work um, in the next round um, based on the um, 
General Assembly's um, agreed budget. And then the last um, presentation that we have, or the last document that we have to go over with you is the payment and payroll and benefit chart. Uh, this is a new chart that was requested by the board, and I'll let Mr. Johns kind of review this and point out a couple of important um, details um, in addition to the chart, or to explain the chart. Mr. Johns? Yes, sir. Uh, this chart starts in fiscal year uh, 2009. And at that point in time, you can see the total budget was uh, $45,665,000. At that time, we had uh, 740 employees. If you look to the far right as to what we've projected for 1920, uh, the $48 million, uh, that's for uh, 610 uh, employees. And, to include the three additional positions would be 613. So over this time, as our benefit requirements uh, have increased millions of dollars with VRS increases, um, I mean, remember a few years ago where we faced a 24% increase in VRS, so, uh, and health insurance, you know, going up each year, those type of benefits, um, so, um, we have had to make you know quite a few adjustments. Also, back in the uh, eight nine uh, year, if you start looking across that top line and you um, look at payroll, you see the payroll was twenty eight million two hundred thousand in nine eight nine uh, went to twenty eight uh, million one hundred three in nine ten, and then dropped down to twenty six million four hundred thousand in uh, the ten eleven year. That year we had to do contract reductions. Uh, we actually did an across the board reduction in pay for everybody. Uh, and we also, that was a year that a lot of SRP in, was offered to a whole bunch of employees. And quite a few employees took advantage of that. Fortunately, we were able to restore the across the board contract reductions because we got federal grant monies uh, in order to do that as part of the recession. If you look uh, over to the 10 and 11 year and you look at the benefits, you see that the benefits were running well over 8 million, close to 9 million, and then in the 11, 12 year, it dropped down to uh, 7.9 million, almost a million dollars. That's the year that the General Assembly did the one quarter break on VRS payments, uh, and that's why so many years later we had a 24% increase in VRS to, you know, restore those payments um, to that. Uh, but at any rate, um, those are some of the uh, things that I wanted to point out on this chart, and I'd be happy to try and answer some questions for you as well. Just if I could, Mr. Chairman, the, I want to emphasize again that while we certainly have gone up in terms of the percentage of payroll and benefits. I think it's important to show that from 2000, FY 2009 to um, this year, we're talking about 130 less employees. Mm -hmm. So while that percentage has gone up some, if you, if you broke it down to um, amount per employee, you would see even an even greater increase. At the beginning of your presentation, you gave us this number. Can you repeat those again? Your staffing level at 2009. Uh, yes. Uh, we had 740 full time positions in 8 9. Okay. And uh, this uh, 1920 is going to be 613, assuming that we hire the three FTEs that proposed in the budget. We're at 610 today. Uh, yes, the, the, well, you have the payroll, then you have benefits, and right. benefits, you know, we have faced uh, over the past uh, uh, years since, uh, I, let's say the last um, six or seven years, we have had uh, over six million dollars increases in things that were out of our control, such as the VRS, such as the health insurance. If you add those incremental increases up each year, you know, that's going to account for that. And so 
you know, we've kind of had to decrease uh, the staff that we have. Uh, there's one other number that I would point out too. Um, even though we've decreased staff, we've still been good on our uh, people teacher ratios, and that chart was presented earlier. If you look back at the eight, uh, nine year, our uh, enrollment at that time was 4,475. Uh, our projected enrollment for this coming year is 4,298. So there's been a decrease in students over, you know, this uh, period as well. So yeah, let me ask you the question in a different way. Just I just want to make sure we're saying the same thing to each other. What's included in line items specifically? Oh, uh, in in line items are your uh, all of your uh, contracts, all of your utilities, your um, uh, tuitions that you pay to other uh, school divisions, your supplies for school and staff. Um, you know, it's everything that, except for payroll and yeah, that's, 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 that's what I want to make sure. To me, that's everything but the personal accounts. Right. Everything else, right. So our everything but category has dropped by a million dollars since 2009. Right. So that, um, before we leave this slide, do yep. any of the members have other questions? Just a comment. Yes, sir, Mr. Cole. That increase in personnel cost has been the primary driver in our increase in per people costs. Is that an accurate statement? Yes, that is an absolutely an accurate statement. But yes, sir. Other questions? Do you have a per employee cost? With how that breaks down by employee. I have not done that, but it'd be easy enough to do because I do have the employees for each um, year. All right, other questions? Okay, thank you very much. That's the information that we have. We'll be, um, when we get the final numbers from the state, hopefully on Friday, we'll share those with you. Um, and. Um, we will uh, continue to work over the next couple weeks, um, and we'll certainly take any um, ideas or suggestions that the board has, um, uh, if you care to um, share them with us. And we'll come back to you on March 12th with um, some recommendations for how we want to make up the gap uh, between what the state has done. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Next item on our agenda is, is our public comment period, uh, and this is public comment period with a time limit of three minutes per individual and five minutes per group with a 30-minute total time limit. We would ask that any speakers address the board as a whole and not address their comments to individual board members. Also ask that you identify yourself by name and please provide us with your address. Uh, public comment period is open. Public comment period is open. All right, seeing no movement to our podium for the evening. Close public comment period. Dr. Jones, do you have some reports for us? Sir? We do. Uh, first one is um, receive information about the CAFR, the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Uh, Mr. Johns is going to um, take us through this item, uh, which is information for you based on the um, audit for last fiscal year. Thank you, sir. Um, the um, CAFR, the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, um, that was for the year ended June 30, 2018. That audit was completed in uh, December uh, and has uh, uh, very pleased to let the school board know that uh, the audit was a clean audit again this year. Uh, there are no you know, findings or anything for the school board. This financial report is a responsibility of the uh, county and uh, Charla Schubert, the finance director, presents the report and the auditors will you know, confirm that it is accurately and fairly presented. And in the in the CAFR itself on page two, there's an opinion paragraph that you know says that it is presented uh, fairly. Now, even though this is a county responsibility, because the school division is a major component unit in this report, um, we have to ensure, and we do sign off on this CAFR that all of the numbers in here that relate to the school division, you know, are accurate. And so um, we do this each year. And um, uh, so um, it is, uh, you know, 
pleasing to report that there are no findings or negative comments for the school division. Um, there is uh, one thing that I would uh, like to share with the board, uh, and that is if you bring up the, the capital maintenance reserve. Um, the school, the uh, county had appropriated uh, $22,581,000 to the school division to use for um, FY18. Uh, we used $22,374,000 of that. And uh, so that left an unspent balance of uh, $206,000. And those uh, dollars have been transferred to the school division CIP reserve fund. And what this chart shows you is that when this reserve fund was set up in 2015, uh, in just a three year period, um, we had accumulated almost $1 million in this reserve fund. And that includes spending $300,000 of it for the children at the high school several years ago, as well as $62,000 on the transportation facility because those bids came in over what was appropriated for that budget. And so um, we have this train project going on right now, and as a part of that, uh, uh, there was an agreement to use $500,000 of this as a down payment. And so we're still going to, you know, have um, almost $500,000 left over. So uh, this has been beneficial for the county and the school division because we're able to manage this and do some of the capital projects um, that have been unfunded in the past. We're able to address some of those things now. And so I'm glad to, you know, let uh, the board know that. And my last comment is there was one suggestion in the audit for the schools and the county, and that has to do with us spending federal dollars and that they want our procurement procedures to specifically say that uh, we also use those for any federal dollars that we may do bids or, you know, contracts uh, with. And, we're in compliance with it because we do, but it, uh, we just need to update, the school and county needs to update our uh, procedures and say that we that it applies to those as well. And that's it, unless there's some questions about the report. Mr. Chan? Yes, ma'am. So when do we think that would be done? With um, <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> to be honest with you, but uh, I'll, I will try and get it done this year. But uh, this this really has more to deal with if we were to award a contract on federal dollars of $25,000 or more, we've never done that. And so, you know, it's just a suggestion. It's not a finding, but we will get, we will update the procedures. There's several other things in the procedures I want to update, and that's why I'm hedging on saying when, because of, of you know, all the other requirements that we have. We're not in violation of anything. It's just a suggestion. And if we regularly awarded federal contracts over that $25,000, then it would be more of a priority. But since we never have, it's, it's not the priority that it would be otherwise. All right, other questions? Mr. Chair, I have Ms. Ayers and I have been on the audit, county audit committee and there was a lot of conversation about listing pensions and insurance as liabilities on their balance sheet. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot more detail, a lot more technicalities than I'll ever quite understand, but just to say that it is on there now and that nobody seems terribly, we're in compliance. But nobody seems to be, at that meeting, nobody seems to be terribly concerned about that being listed as a liability. I don't know what you think, Mr. John. Mr. John, is that? Well, this uh, audit firm that we're using now, uh, when they came on board a couple of years ago, uh, they wanted us to change the way we estimate what that liability is. And so, you know, we've had some discussion on that, you know, each year. but. That is a process that we have done for years and we do. Uh, at the uh, end of June each year when we have run all of our 
um, uh, June, July, and August payrolls and approve those, we run a leave liability report and we have to do some calculations as to um, what we might pay out over the next 10 years and that amount is uh, recorded uh, as a liability in this uh, CAFR and so we do that and uh, that's the only change is, um, that has impacted us but they uh, have uh, as far as at the state level required uh, the recording of some VRS liability which we didn't used to have to do. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Jones. Other questions or comments? <coughs> All right. Thank you, Doug. Thanks. Um, Mr. Cole uh, foreshadowed the next item, and that is the appointment of school board representatives to the county's <coughs> audit committee. Um, as Mr. Cole said, him and Ms. Ayers have served um, on that committee uh, last year, just or two years, just last year. So, um, so in reading the bylaws, I see that the chairman of the school board is the authority to appoint two members to serve on that group. Yes, sir. And I think that the appointments that Ms. Ayers and Mr. Cole have probably been in effect for a couple of years. And, uh, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but... Um, the, the, Mr. Melton asked me, I guess he asked you, Valerie, like, mm -hmm. you, you're right, it was two years ago. We didn't meet the first time until, I want to say, like, maybe December a year ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, so we, we, at a meeting when they were talking about membership in the bylaws, my suggestion was that I would have a board of supervisors member reach down to the school board and appoint two people that the school board ought to be the people that that were responsible for making for making that appointment. So that's the reason this one. Uh, I think that's uh, how we work with it. So it, in the same spirit in which we do our other advisory committees and things we serve, I'd be interested in any of the members who would like to, Mr. Cole, Ms. Ayers, if you would like to continue your service, please let us know if you would like uh, others of us to step into that role, please let us know that as well. And then we look to raise the group on who it should be. Mr. Cole actually um, attended more meetings than I did because they were having the meetings at a time where I couldn't come because of work and taking care of my grandchildren. So then they got my schedule. So the last couple of meetings that I've attended were made later in the afternoon and on an accommodating date, which I thought was very nice of them to do that so I could attend. Um, and so I, I'm fine. I'm fine doing it again if no one else. As a burning desire. So Ms. Ayers has an interest. Mr. Cole, do you have an interest as well? I always have an interest in sharing the wealth. Sharing <laughs> opportunities and personal growth. All right. So and there is personal growth because it is. You, pretty, you learn a lot. You I mean, learn you, a lot. You, you, get, you, get, you do get a perspective from the county side, which we don't necessarily, we wouldn't necessarily get just here. And. I think it's important that we have some representatives on there because they often talk about school issues and you know, without us being there then, then they don't necessarily they wouldn't necessarily get a complete picture or, or accurate information. We can all you know if we don't know we can always go back and get the information for them. So, all right, well I'm always eager for a chance for personal growth. Ms. Emil, are you interested? I, I would be, but if you want to, you go right ahead. Well, I'm happy. I mean, if someone else wants to do it, I was just looking up the the um, next meeting is um, so, uh, same. Monday the 11th, 3.30 p.m. Okay. That's you, so you. Would you like to do this? Yeah, I'm sorry. Time. time doesn't suit you. Okay. Mr. Cuffa? I'd, I'd be open to do that. You would like to serve in this role? I will serve in this role. 3.30 I'm not, I'm not using all. the word like. I will serve in this role. I'm not just <laughs> all. So at this point, what I hear is Mr. Tucker would like to challenge Ms. Ayers. Is that right? Well, I thought you wanted the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mr. No. Would you like to do it? Or would you like to do it? I'll, I'll do it. All right. Okay, and I'm fine. Okay, I'm fine. Right, so we're, we're, we'll act on a, uh, we'll, we'll do this in a formal book. All, right. all those in favor, favor and, I, and I have made the nomination of these two individuals. All those in favor. I'll second it. We have a second. All those in favor of Mrs. Ayers and Mr. Kunk is serving as the school board representatives on this advisory committee. Please respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion carries 5 0. Congratulations, Mr. Kunk and Mrs. Ayers. Thank you for your service. <coughs> Mr. Dunn. Thank you. 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 Thank
Well, Mr. Dr. Jefferson. Sure. The next item is some um, changes to um, how we report and deduct uh, VRS um, um, contributions. Uh, Mr. Johns is going to take us through a, a presentation on this item. Um, it is um, an item that is a little complicated, so we'll um, be happy to answer any questions that you have. And if you need more information, we're happy to give that to you as well, because it, it is something that will impact our employees, uh, but it's something that we need to do um, um, just from an accounting standpoint. So, Mr. Johns? Uh, yes. Um, do you have the. Uh... No, there's no question. Oh, okay. No. All right. Uh, what this is about is, uh, you know, going to the same place all the other school divisions in the state are going and meeting the expectation of VRS and uh, reducing some workload that we have. Um, basically in VRS, uh, and I'm, I know that the, the board members are aware of this, we have three different tiers or three different plans. Uh, the first uh, tier one and tier two plans are um, defined benefit plans and um, the uh, the first one has been around since we've had the RS in 2010 uh, uh, they came out with tier two and the difference for tier two was that those employees would pay their share of the five percent of the RS prior to that employees were uh, the employer was paying it off they came out with tier three you know after that and tier three it has a piece that is a defined benefit and it has a piece that is a um, defined contribution. And so what VRS is expecting is they expect us to um, submit the contributions to them based upon an employee's contract term. And so what that means is that if uh, you are a uh, teacher and on a 10-month contract that we submit all of the dollars, both the employee and employer share, to VRS during the 10 months that they are uh, working. And uh, we have always done it over a 12-month period. Uh, and if for Tier 1 and 2 employees, um, the balancing out with VRS is not so hard. It takes a little bit of time, but it's simply a math formula to convert the 10 months to, or the 12 to 10 to make sure we balance with them. Um, but with tier three, not only do you have uh, the two different contributions, but those employees also have the option of contributing more uh, anywhere from uh, a half a percent up to four percent and the employer is matching so we have to balance out those employees on an individual basis and um, we now have 137 employees that are in tier three as we go forward into the future it will all be tier three employees because the tier ones and twos will have you know retired and you know moved on and so that is the issue. We go to the uh, next uh, slide, uh, please. Um, okay, so I've already addressed this where we are uh, up to 137 employees in uh, this tier. And just so you know, if you go back to uh, years ago when we just had the uh, tier one, uh, I suspect that probably half the divisions in the gym uh, were doing it for the contract and half were doing it over a 12 month basis. Many divisions, particularly since tier three employees came out, have been moving over to uh, doing the withholding and the payments uh, per the contract, which is how BRS is billing us. And uh, so right now, uh, it's a 70%, 30% uh, split. There's still 37 school divisions that are doing it over 12 month periods, and all the rest of them have switched over to um, doing it per the contract. And so um, what we've done here is we've taken two samples, so I wanted to make sure the board understands how this would work. This is a teacher 
that uh, is uh, has 10 years of experience. The teacher's contract is $46,500 a year, uh, and that contract is paid to that teacher over a 12-month basis from September through August. Um, if you take that $46,000 on a monthly basis, the teacher's making $3,875 a month. We deduct the employee share of 5% for of $193 and send that to the IRS along with the employer share uh, over a 12-month period. And so at the end of uh, the year, the employee is paid $2,325 to the IRS. <coughs> if we were to change this with our current pay scale, um, then what we would do is during the September to June period, which is when that teacher is working, uh, their monthly gross is still the same, still $38.75. But for those 10 months in September to June, we still have to pay that $2,325 to BRS. So we're going to divide that by 10 instead of by 12 and uh, submit $232 a month from the employee. Their net check is going to go down $38.75 a month for 10 months. But then for the two months of July and August when they're not working, um, there would be no VRS deduction. And so their net pay would be, for those two months, $193 more a month. Obviously, that's an impact to the employee for that 10-month period. Summer would be nice, but for that 10-month period, it's a, it does impact, negatively impact that employee. If we do this, in conjunction with the 3% raise. And so many of the divisions that did switch over tried to do it when they were implementing a raise. And you look at that bottom line, the, uh, that teacher's raise, that teacher's monthly salary is gonna go up 3%. So it's going from 38.75 to 39.91. Their 5% BRS is gonna be 239 a month for 10 months. And so for 10 months out of the year, their net pay is going to be $70 more than it was uh, before. And then during the summer, they're going to get uh, their net pay for those two months, July and August, is going to be $300 more. It would be nice if we could do that at Christmas time, but, you know, we can't. Uh, it has to be done with the uh, uh, months that IRS is, is expecting to get the money. And so making this change in conjunction with the raise is beneficial uh, to the employee. Uh, there are some other reasons why to do it that make it easier in that when we have a, um, when we hire an employee during the middle of the year, or one leaves us during the middle of the year, we have one that's on, you know, long-term leave, um, that presents another uh, balance and problem that we have to work out. Uh, you can go to the next slide, please. We did the same thing with a driver. So a driver that's uh, on the tenth step, so you can see what that impact is. And I won't go through all of the numbers, but basically if we make this change without um, a raise, the driver would see a decrease of uh, $10.70 a month for 10 months, but then would um, July and August, their net check would be $53 more. Doing it with a 3% raise, they're going to get $19.46 more a month uh, for the 10 months, and then uh, during the summer get $85 more uh, for those two months. And that's uh, procedurally, you know, how this will work. Um, you go to the next slide, please. This does not impact 12-month people. Uh, it impacts 11-month and 10-month employees, and we do have a few 11-month employees. And so if it's an 11-month employee, uh, they would um, see this change in August because they work, uh, their contract runs from August uh, through September. And uh, teachers and other 10-month employees their contract runs from September through June. And so um, that, those are the times that they would see this change. And uh, so at this point, I'm trying to take any questions that the board uh, may have on this uh, 
Uh, yeah, just one quick comment. We've discussed this change, and, and obviously it's one that we would go out and communicate uh, to our staffs going to faculty meetings and different department meetings to make sure everybody fully understands it because it is impacting our employees' paycheck uh, if we move forward with this change. Um, and what convinced me to, that um, we needed to bring this to the board is one, it's the right year to do it if we are able to move forward with the 3% raise, but it's also when Mr. Johns informed me that he estimated within the next three to five years that he would have a single employee whose only job was to reconcile these VRS contributions. Um, that's how time consuming it would be once we increase the number of tier three employees that we have over the next three to five years. That seems to me to be um, a waste of personnel and, um, and uh, our resources if we can make this change in a year while giving a raise where employees don't see a um, decrease in their monthly check at all um, and would see a nice increase in two months out of the year. It seems like it's the right year to do it as, well, as long as we communicate it well and everybody fully understands what to expect over the next 12 months. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Cohn, just a question. Does year-round school uh, negate the requirement for this payment schedule that has to match the contract <coughs> length? If we do a 12-month contract, well, I mean, look at the right. look at the divisions that are experimenting with the year-round school. I mean, you still have 10-month employees, but because they're employed basically all year with the, with the quarterly breaks, how does this ruling affect that situation? If, if they're on a 10-month contract, the IRS expects the money to be sent to them on a 10-month basis, and. and you know, those tier three employees um, that are choosing to invest additional dollars in the defined contribution portion of this, we're also, there's another third party agency we're having to balance with on a quarterly basis, all of those. And, you know, it, so it just becomes more and more work uh, to do because, you know, it's not just balancing with VRS monthly, but it's balancing. Uh, with that 457 uh, the TPA quarterly. So it's at the VRS is looking at it based upon uh, the length of the contract. And that's what they're, you know, uh, that's when they're wanting the money to be sent in, regardless of how we pay. Okay. Other questions or comments? My only comment, Mrs. 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 Chairman, was who thinks of these things? I mean, <laughs> you know, it's just, Ridiculous nonsense. I'll say it. Ridiculous nonsense. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Mr. Bell. How I many all are all of our employees on pay twelve months now? Um. Yes. I the most part, yes. When we had cafeteria workers, the workers were paid over ten month period. But right now, all of our contracted employees are paid over a twelve month basis. I'm old enough to remember when this was going on for mm -hmm. that there was a difference in the summer pay because of the virus. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's other questions or comments? Who manages the 457 portion for our employees? Is it the RS? No, they have a different, it's uh, ICMC. ICMC uh, what do you do for an employee that leaves mid cycle? You just balance it out with a reconciliation with leave payout? Well, if they have any leave to do so. Uh, if they do not, we have to make up that difference. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the most I've seen over the years is maybe $2,000 that we had to, you know, come up with to make up that difference to make somebody told that was out on leave without pay for quite a while and then, you know, departed. And so, uh, we do have to make up those differences. So before we separate, we're going to have to make it up if there's no right. same big balance. That's correct. Yeah. But to me, it's the, the workload is the bigger issue. I mean, I don't want to spend money we shouldn't spend, but the workload is... Uh, no, I promise you I'll be the same way. How much, how much time does it take per full you know, to do this? Well, right now, right now <coughs> we're doing about a day uh, now, to get this all reconciled was quite a bit of work, but we've got a smooth process going. So it's taking about a day right now for just doing um, 
with BRS because we've got everything set up. But uh, a, at the beginning of each year, new contract period, you know, that's two or three days because of all the changes that you've made with pay rates and everything else and the new hires and departures. Uh, and then uh, to balance out, you know, with the CBA <coughs> on a quarterly basis is another, you know, day. Uh, but, um, you know, like I said, um, with this growing before seven years down the road, we'll all, it'll all be two or three people. And if we don't balance this out correctly every year, there's going to be an audit filing. And if we don't do it every month and, and have a sufficient documents, because when the auditors come in, they'll take one or two months and we don't know which ones they're going to pick. So we have to do this you know, every month. Yes, sir. Right. So this is information. This is a procedural um, step that we take. So we wanted to bring it to the board for your information. Um, and then we'll certainly hear any feedback that you have. But our next step would then be to take it out and uh, share this information with the employees, make sure they have a firm understanding. We'll offer individual meetings, small group meetings, as well as faculty meetings, um, so that if people need more information, uh, we can certainly give that to them. Right. And we won't, as far as going through and making the change, we won't do that until about the third week of June because we've got to run our June, July, and August payrolls uh, during June because we accrue those to the current fiscal year. After those are done and before we run the uh, payroll in July for 12 month people is when we've got to go in and make the system change. So there's plenty of time for us to talk about this and get the word out. And it's not a part of the budget or anything. There's no dollars involved in this. It's just a procedural change. Will you keep us aware of the feedback? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm, I'm very interested in that. Yep. Thank you. The other thing I'd be interested to know is what the neighboring districts do. I'd be interested to know Chesterfield and yes, they do. They uh, do the yes, they do. In fact, we had asked uh, BRS to give us some feedback. And as far as uh, our uh, neighbors are concerned, around the Richmond area in Rico, uh, Hanover, Chesterfield, Richmond City, they all do for the contract. Uh, some of the ones of our neighbors that still do over a 12 month period, like we're doing, uh, Amelia, Buckingham, Colonial Heights, Dinwiddie, Fluvanna, Prince Edward. Um, I mean, I don't know all of the 37 right now, but um, only 37 out of 132 uh, or, are still doing the correct. Well, well, right. Do you have to do anything on the administration of the Is that purely between the employees and third party? Uh, well, we have to process all the changes and, uh, you know, but then as far as the dollars are concerned, they're sent to the third party. And the third party will manage, I mean, if you're speaking outside of this, the third party, like other 457s and uh, 403s that employees select, the third party does the coordination also to make sure that they are not uh, set aside more than they are allowed to by law. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Other questions or comments? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And the last item that I have for you this evening as part of the superintendent's report is an overnight field trip. This is a, a request from uh, the high school for the F FCCLA state competition. Um, it is taking place in Virginia, in Virginia Beach in April and uh, looking for approval of this field trip which um, select students will go on and, and we have participated in every year. Make a motion to accept. Have a motion, is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor, please respond aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries five zero. All right, next item we have on our agenda is closed session. Mr. Cole, can I ask you please sort of make a motion on the uh, procedural portion of this course. I recommend making motion to enter into closed session pursuant to code 2.2-3711A1 to discuss the employment resignation and leave of specific employees and pursuant to code 2.2-3711A2 and A4 to discuss the expulsion and school placement of specific students. That's codes 2.2-3711A1, A2, and A4. 
Second. Motion to second. All in favor, please just call aye. Aye. Are you opposed? Hearing none, we are in closed session. Second. Second. All right. All in favor, please just call aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. We're back in open session. Mr. Cole, sir. Whereas the Powhatan County School Board has convened a closed meeting on this date pursuant to an affirmative recorded vote in accordance with provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. And whereas Section 2.2-3712D of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by this board that such a closed meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law. Now therefore be resolved that the Powhatan County School Board hereby certifies that to the best of each member's knowledge, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Virginia law were discussed in the closed meeting to which the certification applies. And only public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were discussed or considered. Uh, Aye. 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 All right. Next item is approval of the personnel docket and addendum. Is there a motion? I make a motion. We approve the personnel docket and addendum. Second. I have a motion and a second by Ms. Ayers. All in favor, please respond by. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Five zero. The item is approved. <coughs> All right. Next topic or next item on the agenda are board comments. Now, Mr. Kunkel, we'll start with you, please, sir. Uh, nothing specific. I did send you all a heads up on the, I, I can't attend the PLI dinner. It coincides with my yes, sir. mother's 100th 100, 100 birthday. That's, wow. that's amazing. Yeah, I don't have too many of those, so I figured yeah. I better stick around and ask yeah, that. Really so we we butter 100 pieces of chocolate from the candy store that she used to frequent in Ohio. Oh, so, that's awesome. great. That's just want to take a second to thank everyone um, for everything that they did for Black History Month. I think our school system does an excellent job of, of promoting that and having really wonderful programs that are very positive for our community. And um, so just thank everybody for all the hard work they put into the programs and, and making that happen. Um, <coughs> the other thing, I want to just reiterate how, and I think we're all registered to come to our own Southside Regional Forum. And I really do hope everybody attends that because it's um, it would be nice to have everyone here representing our school system. So. All right. Thank That's you. Thank you. Excuse me, Ms. Sears. So, do we have um, particular um, <coughs> roles or uh, that you need us to do? Or? Well, I think just to be here to socialize with people and to talk about the schools and the school system and you know people that are the hosts normally. Um, that's what they do. They oh, just okay. socialize and, and pat questions. ourselves. Yeah, yeah, answer questions. Pat ourselves on the. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot, lot to be proud of. We do have a lot to do. Yes. Um, well, the uh, uh, MLK um, Youth Day went very well, as Dr. Jones has said. Um, uh, I, I think in some cases, um, you know, having our own keynote speaker there, you know, I mean, it worked out beautifully. Yep. She did a very nice job. Um, the jazz band, I believe that was the middle school, yep. and the JROTC, and then I, I liked how Mr. Dean, um, I guess the uh, other students from the chorus were tired from the competitions and sick and etc. I just like how he thought, you know, okay, I'm, I'm just going to do it myself, and he has a great voice, and I really appreciate him stepping up and doing something. That was, that was good. Um, also, I'm very proud to say that all of the scholarship winners were from Powhatan High School this year, which makes me very, very happy, and uh, that um, our staff over there, the, the principal, the administration, uh, guidance counselors, um, in, in helping to get those um, students to apply, as well as all the scheduling and rescheduling um, the administration did, too. Um, the uh, Black History Program I did see this morning here at the middle school. Uh, the, these kids were just awesome. The, the uh, chorus saying the bridge uh, over troubled water. I mean, it was so beautiful. I mean, I got chills. It was just, it, you, you would think we were at a high school. Their performance was so wonderful. Uh, the jazz pan band played too. They had that Austin Powers number, which was really fun. Um, <laughs> 
And, and then the speaker, uh, the Dr. Nickens, he, um, he had wonderful compliments about our music program. I guess we forget. Uh, he says not every middle school has this caliber of, of, of a program. So he wanted the kids to realize that um, and to appreciate their uh, music teachers as well as all the teachers there and the administration. And I just, you know, the, the program was for everybody. So I thought that was really nice. And then my last thing is um, thank you for setting up the uh, flexible seating. I believe Dr. Tibbs and uh, Mrs. Wilson, I really appreciate um, you doing that for us to use so we can be in touch with what our students are experiencing. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Emil. Mr. Cole. A couple things. First thing is I just want to thank the staff for all the budget information they give us and, and for when we ask for something else that they, they give it to us. Uh, as Mr. Walters has said, more information I think helps bolster the case that we're good fiscal managers and we're good stewards of the county taxpayer money. And, and, but I think that's, it, that information is very important for our citizens. And I do appreciate it. And the CIP Reserve Fund, which we managed to get set up in 2014 and started in 2015, has been a win-win for the county and for the school system and for the taxpayers. And, you know, that's one of the wisest decisions, that uh, policy decisions that that, that, I, that, that we've made. You know, and it, I think it's great that we've got that money accumulated and we're able to use it when we need it without having to go back and have a crisis in our budget. The last thing is, as I sent an email yesterday, that, that the calendar uh, bill finally passed after, I don't know how many years of being uh, killed at the last minute. Uh, you know, and Dr. Jones emailed back to us and said that you know, they're looking at it for next year. I, I just want to know whether this board has any, has heard anything from anybody about whether they want to stay, whether they want to act on it before then. You know, it's been, so it's been 20 years coming. Maybe by this time, people are so so mean to, or so uh, indifferent to it that it's hard to believe it's actually going to happen. Uh, so, you know, I think it's fine to wait a year. But you know, I'm also open to if people are really pushing to say, "Hey, this is something I'm waiting for, and I really want to start for Labor Day." Uh, it certainly gives us some great opportunities with our calendar. So, as we're looking, you know, I know that we've been looking at. What works best for Pound Town, you know, in, in terms of <laughs> academically how it can benefit students and how it can benefit our testing schedule. So that's all I have. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I could add a note on that, I, I mean, I support that. I also think we should be looking at uh, year round school as an option as well. I think there's more support for that in the community than you are. I would support that. <laughs> I brought that up again, Mr. Kunkka, and I agree. All I right. think there is. So, Ms. Ms. I think we have a lot of support for looking support. Look at alternatives and considering. So, um, so now I'm in my comments, and I would just say, Dr. Jones, based on the comments of Mrs. Zimbel, Mr. Cole, and Mr. Kunkka, maybe that would be an item we could uh, take a look at the next meeting and have some discussion about. And I, and I would encourage you, if there is a way to uh, garner some input from the community or from the faculty for us, the students, I think that might be helpful as well. I, I will say that I have not had anyone approach me, no. but I, you know, I could be the outlier and perhaps others have. So, but I, I would be interested in talking about it based on the feedback from uh, Mrs. Emil, Mr. Cole, and Mr. Conco. Okay. So the, my, my comments I will now limit to, I just want to echo as some of the other folks have said, I thought the MLK event was very, very well attended. It was very well put together. I thought the event was very nice. Uh, I was very humble uh, to both present our resolution, but also about the engagement of our, our staff, our faculty, and the students. They did such a nice job. The musicians, the uh, speaker, the uh, performers, we had lots of people there volunteering in various roles. Uh, they were ushers, they helped with food and other things, their students in our, in our schools. And what particularly struck me is the fact that uh, our schools really are a focal point for our community, and that was very clear Sunday afternoon. So it was nice to see our school engaged in that fashion and by school I really mean our entire community. So it was very good. And, and with that, I just do want to just say one thing that I asked for a lot of information as Mr. Mr. Cole has spoken to, but I did get a lot of questions about that, particularly about how we're, how we're formulating our budget, you know, where our money goes. And I think information like that 
permits me to, to provide a better response. And uh, with what I see, it makes me very comfortable in responding to those kinds of questions. So, and, and that's what I have. So, Dr. Jones, at this point, the superintendent's remarks. Yeah, I mean, the only comment I would make is just to add a little bit more information. I have talked to um, that Maggie Walker uh, meeting last week um, we, I, during the superintendent steering committee. Somebody brought up about you know the implementation of the um, Labor Day because. I think everybody in Region One, other than Goochland and maybe Sussex, is doesn't do not have waivers. Nobody's looking at doing it for this year. Everybody's looking at doing it for the next year, getting community input. Um, as I responded to Mr. Cole's request, and I agree with him, we've been waiting a long time for this. But um, with people having vacations planned, with schedules already set for the summer, we've already got things scheduled um, all throughout the summer. Um, you know, it may be better suited, but certainly we can bring back some more information and, and, um, and discuss that with you. But I just wanted to share that, yes, that I have had a conversation with my colleagues and um, there seems to be a consensus that um, taking a year to, to plan and bringing it forward in the spring and fall would be better. So, um, but we're not going to make any comments because you shared that merits or... I haven't had anybody okay. reach out to me. Right, right. right. Well, thank you. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. No, that's fine. Um, and that's the only comment that I had. I, I agree with everybody. We do have, um, um, I believe, our last African American Black History Month program is at Powhatan Elementary. It's Thursday. There's two performances, one about 9 o'clock, one about 1 o'clock. If you are around and want to see their performance, they have an outside group coming in. And then we also have on that same day at the same times, as well as the 7 o'clock performance, the um, annual Pocahontas Elementary Read Across America performance, which is always a lot of fun with a lot of staff members involved and in, um, singing and dancing and um, celebrating reading and Dr. Seuss. So um, if you'd like to attend one of those, well, 9 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and 7 o'clock, I think, are the general times for those. Scrambled egg super in the iBook. All right. Okay, good. And that's all that I have, Mr. Chairman. All right, sir. Thank you very much. All right, so the next item on our agenda is adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? Is there a motion to adjourn? All right, a motion. A motion and a second. All in favor, please respond with aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned.